Hi everyone and welcome for this brand new tutorial on the project HeroQuest. So this time we are going to focus on the first set of uh, scenery. I decided to cut in three parts uh, all the different elements to paint all the different scenery. This first part is going to focus on the wood and the non-metallic metal part. Uh, the second part will be about this, uh, everything is about this, some stone and everything else. And the last one uh, will be about the special effect. Um, I do that because it will be more simple for me to show you. And for example, when I talk about uh, the wood, you can apply that on all the wood parts of your scenery. So that's more easy for me and more understandable for you. Um, so I really hope you enjoy. The next one will be on the second batch of scenery, the next tutorial. And the next one will be on the last batch of scenery and we will start after that the characters of this um, uh, board game. So what next? Uh, I think that's all. So don't hesitate uh, to support me on Patreon if you like this kind of content and uh, to like the uh, video and to post a comment if you have any kind of uh, feedback uh, to give to my content. So thanks again. For watching and see you soon guys let's go for the paint so for this tutorial i'm going to show you um, some different way to paint uh, the different scenery and for that i'm going to use different kind of ink um, to create different kind of wood metallic parts uh, sometimes it's going to be some gold metallic parts and some other times that's going to be some uh, classical metallic parts in gray or um, gray a little bit uh, uh, blue something like that so you are going to see some different way to paint all this different scenery so I'm going to apply some hardened leather for, uh, to have a pretty um, dark uh, wood, for example. And I'm going to use once again uh, my metallic palettes just to be sure the paint is not going to be uh, dry too quickly. Uh, that's what happens when you use some um, paper palette uh, that's going to be more dry and more more really more quickly as you can see i use a large brush just to be sure to um, reach uh, the more large surfaces i can in a low as a low uh, step i can to make it more easily and more quickly we are going to try to make that in one way to be sure to have these paints everywhere and to be sure the surfaces will be clean and without any uh, different surfaces different color when you uh, when you apply So I'm going to show you on this part for the wood, but uh, for example, um, <clears throat> I'm not necessarily going to show you uh, all the different parts in wood. You just have to apply this uh, same method uh, every time you see some uh, wood on your scenery. So as you can see, you can always change. And for example, right here, um, these parts, I'm going to use some dark wood um, in place of uh, the hardened laser, just to have a more dark wood. <laughs> uh, so it's less red, but that's going to be sometimes uh, helpful for two different reasons for your motivation because you are going to paint with some different kind of color and for the gameplay that's going to be 
sometimes uh, some um, uh, helpful just to uh, make some distinction between your different uh, stuff on the board the different scenery and and that can be pretty pretty cool so i do that on uh, that uh, step but you can do that on all the different scenery just change your mind by change the color of your wood So I'm going to continue the chests and for that I'm going to use different kind of paint to create different kind of non-metallic metal, something very simple, for example some uh, zealot yellow on this one to create some gold non-metallic metal, some runic grey and some gravel gray, so on the two different other, just to have uh, different kind of non-metallic metal. So now I apply some runic gray and it's always a good thing to have some different kind of scenery on the, on the board and that's going to create more life to have uh, some few kind of different color on the different scenery. And now I come back with some Gravelord Grey to have a more dark non-metallic metal on this part. So I really enjoy painting this um, kind of surfaces with non-metallic metal because um, I think the the paint with some metallic pigment is sometimes more difficult to apply so that's a good way to base your uh, color um, and you can always come back later with uh, metallic color directly and pushing your highlight with your metallic color that's work in the same way than uh, for the non-metallic metal you just have to apply it on the different edges and that's going to give more life and more light on your different part. So now I apply some blue to red. I'm going to do that kind of things on all the different scenery to have a level one ready to play. And after I'm going to do the same uh, for the book into the library 
just to have different color on the different book and for that I'm just going to change my brush because it's a little bit too large and I'm going to apply different kind of color on the different kind uh, different book I have in the library as you can see on every book I'm going to apply some different color just like that just to create more life into the center and remember I always try to apply first my darkest color and after my more lightful color so it's going to be more easy uh, and if I do some mistake it's going to be really really uh, less uh, visible on the mini try always to have for example three book or five book but um, that's going to be more natural to have something not necessarily symmetrical So we can use some blue, some magic blue for example. So we are going now to pushing our lights on the wood and for that I'm going to do uh, some few dry brush with some Artist Opus special dry brush series and for that I'm going to use this one and a smaller one uh, for the very very small surfaces. So I'm going to use at the beginning oddly some um, snake bit laser and after that I'm going to use some mix between uh, snake bit laser and some few white. This method is perfectly uh, okay when you have uh, a lot of uh, contrast into the sculpts but if you have not enough contrast so you, you need to change uh, your method for something more uh, complicated just by pushing more highlight on every line but for that that's work pretty well you can always do that with a more classical and a regular brush and in this case you need to come uh, in parallel of the surfaces just to apply just some few on the more um, a strong volume of your minis and after I am going to do the same by adding some few white into my mix I remove a lot of my paint and I'm going to make again a few dry brush on the up part you can make one, two, three or more uh, layer of this step uh, by reducing your surfaces you are going to create more and more volume and contrast on the chest Thank you. 
So as you can see, I'm going to use on the dark wood some Dumbleborn to have more highlight on my very, very dark wood. The same way we are going to reduce step by step the surfaces we are going to reach to create our highlight. Remember, I'm going to show you on this uh, chest, but I'm going to apply the same step on all the different scenery with some wood. And depending on the color of your wood, you can make one or the other uh, receipts. receipts and now I'm going um, I'm going to add some few of the two different color I already use to create one more highlight once again I reduce the surface I reach to create some strong highlights who come from the up of the miniatures So now I am going to come back on all the gray surfaces and um, uh, with some few white I'm going to push my highlights on every edges to create my uh, non-metallic uh, metal effect. As you can see I use a lot of side of my brush to push my highlights on every edges. So I'm not going to show you that on every of the, 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 be, the bundle of uh, scenery I uh, paint right now, um, but uh, it's always the same things um, about this. It's about pushing your highlight on every, every, every edges. And remember to push if uh, that's not in one time, don't hesitate to push again and again. And in, for example, three layer, you will have and enough uh, strong um, white on your edges. Just a reminder for all my boss on Patreon, you have access to a, a video um, about the quantity of paint uh, into your brush and the dilution you need. So that will be pretty cool to see again this tutorial to more have a better understood of uh, the different step I show you right now. So I'm going to continue like that and uh, I'm going to stop when I see the uh, white uh, color pretty clearly on the different light part So to do the, the gold uh, in non-metallic metal, we are going to come uh, with some yellow uh, gold from Prince August. And after that, I'm going to come back uh, with some few white to pushing again my highlight. 
so this same step is going to be apply on all the gold others in different scenery so i'm going to uh, gain some times um, to uh, don't change every time my different color and use a lot this one on all the different scenery i decided to paint um, not necessarily all scenery in one step but um, i separate all the scenery uh, were composed uh, with uh, wood and um, some part in metal uh, just to have in the other way uh, some tutorial about how to paint some stone and all the different uh, special effects we can see on this uh, on the scenery uh, who uh, compose the AeroQuest box for this uh, level 2, I always try to have something with more contrast, with more light. Um, I don't try to have something perfect, uh, but something uh, will be perfect to continue painting by adding more contrast or more different kind of effect on the miniatures. Remember to push your... Um, uh, every uh, age needs to have a pretty strong highlight. That's really, really important. And now I'm going to add more white on the same edges and some point of highlight. This kind of scenery is pretty cool because it gives more immersion. Uh, you are more into the game uh, by adding this kind of element. Uh, this 3D scenery is mm, yeah, a must have for me. And the quality of plastic is not necessarily the best. But for me it's enough uh, for scenery and things like that. Probably not enough for miniatures in my mind. But, in my opinion, but for a uh, scenery that's worked pretty well. So we can come back with some black and pushing our uh, shadow and into the recesses to pushing more contrasts into uh, this paint. By the way, after you apply some black, it's always better to come back and once again pushing a little bit more white to be sure your contrast will be strong and the white will be the last color you put. So it's going to be a more strong color. By the way, you can always use the black very diluted to push into the back part of the wood, just to push in more contrast. For example, it's the same for the non-metallic metal in grey, we can come back and pushing more shadow.
So every time we need to finish with some point of white that's always welcome to have very strong contrast and very strong light to show how the reflection of light is strong on some metallic. So now, after that, I'm going to uh, to make some treatments on all the special cases like this uh, chair, and um, in that case, I already do the wood, so that's okay. I apply exactly the same uh, step than for this chest on the wood, and I'm going to apply um, some highlights just on the red with some corn red and Evilson's red, corn red for the shadow and Evilson's red for the highlight. So for this step we make something pretty easy, we just clean the surfaces where the ink, uh, the speed paint uh, was a little bit too strong. It's like a dry brush but with a not necessarily totally dry uh, brush. So you just have to push your color in the good direction. On this kind of surfaces, the plastic is not necessarily very clean and on this kind of surfaces, uh, speed paint have not necessarily a perfect reaction. So that's uh, give us the opportunity to, to, to clean that. So I come back on the book with exactly the same step. So I push some Evil Sense Red on the up of the book and some Corn Red on the down of the book. That's all. After I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time with some green and with, with some brown. So for the brown, it's just for the brown book. So I use some flat earth from Prince August. And if you have more time, you can always uh, have different kind of color on this book, depending on the time you want to spend into um, this uh, the paint of this part that can work too. And now I just had more white into my brown, just to push just a few more highlight and some few part. And if there are just some paper, you can push. With this so I can push my highlights on the scales into the scenery by the way we can make the same for the blue uh, the same for the green and that will be okay for that and that will be the last step for the second uh, level for this scenery I come back with some blue. This is a 
Uh, airbrush color, but that's worked pretty well with my brush, by the way, unique blue. It's a less covering color, but that worked pretty well to push your different highlight. So I really like the green from Games Workshop because it's pretty covering and pretty easy. So I use this one because it's a more neutral uh, green. And then I apply with a pretty diluted color. And now I just come back by adding just a few white and pushing on the edges. Just drop some few highlights. So I just push a little bit white and it's going to be okay for this scenery in level 2. Let's go for the level up and uh, now for the level 3 we are going to use a lot of airbrush and some few shade in some very very uh, small surfaces to create uh, and to give more life to our element and to all our scenery. So I'm going to use some uh, Sienna color from uh, Pro Color. I really enjoy this color just because it's going to um, to be very very fluid and um, and it's going to let my airbrush very clean during a long time. And now I'm going to um, pushing more shadow into the wood. I use this color because the wood is pretty clear, but um, for the next wood, for the more dark wood, we are going to use directly some black, uh, just to pushing more shadow into the, the wood we are going to be more, uh, more dark. So I just come back on this uh, chest with some uh, sienna again, but only on the non-metallic metal part, just to have more strong um, shadow into my non-metallic metal.
So I'm going to continue, but this time with some matte black uh, uh, from Army Painter hair color. And I'm going to apply my strong shadow on every um, different scenery to have a more strong and more volume on my different scenery. You can see uh, that's going to clean up a little bit my different surfaces and my transition between my different color and that's perfect to uh, mix uh, between that and some dry brush because it's going to clean the different surfaces. So the paint is pretty liquid, so we are going to, when we apply with our airbrush, we are going to see that's going to be uh, to go into the recesses and giving more deep uh, effect to our paint. So that's always welcome. So I come back with some Desert Yellow from Army Painter Hair to push a little bit more highlight on some few uh, and small surfaces. As you can see, it's going to create some layer of light and it's going to give more volume at the end. So I'm going to apply the same light with the same color, but um, not necessarily um, as strong as the first uh, color, just because I want to uh, have some wood uh, more dark always than the first one, just to create some distinction between my different elements. As you can see, that's pretty quick and you need to focus, you don't stay too long on uh, small surfaces but always move on and uh, change the surface you are going to reach at every, every step. So I come back on the chair and this time only on the red part so I'm just going to push um, some few reds on uh, the chair just to clean uh, my surfaces of red and have something more strong and more clean. So with some few black color I'm going to come and pushing some distinction between the different elements. Uh, for example right here I come back uh, with some black all around the red and on this part I come back and I make some few points of black just to create my non-metallic metal aspect into that surfaces. So with my black I'm going to 
come back but um, by the way I, I will come back uh, on the wood in the same way just to pushing a little bit more uh, shadow into the more strong uh, recesses and um, that's going to pushing more contrast into the wood So as you can see with my black very very diluted I come and pushing some juice of uh, black into the more strong recesses just to create once again more and more contrast and giving more volume to all the different scenery and um, that I do that on the chest but it's mm, you can do that on every kind of and type of uh, scenery that's always welcome to give more life so I come back with some skeleton horde on all the um, wood part and I'm going to focus this last highlight on the wood uh, just on the part we're going to kick to keep and to take the more light so remember to um, reduce step by step the surfaces you are going to reach to have something uh, with a light a very uh, with a very strong direction So I come back with my white and my non-metallic parts um, just to uh, pushing one more time uh, my highlight and by the way uh, reduce the different uh, surfaces I reach uh, by mistake when I use my airbrush. So it's going to push again more light and make some correction about the surfaces I reach with my airbrush. So now I come back on all the red uh, parts. I'm going to sh uh, show you that on the share, but I'm going to make the same on the book uh, on the lab library. And um, I'm going just for the moment um, apply some Evil Sense Red to be sure uh, my, my surfaces will be the more clean I can. Remember that's the level three of this paint so the objective is just to have something better than the level 2 for sure and uh, something with more strong light and something more uh, alive remember the red is not a very covering color and if you want to have nice transition you just have to reduce step by step the surfaces you are going to reach so the red will be more and more uh, intense on a smaller and smaller surfaces and that's going to create a very nice transition. So for my second highlight I'm just going to push some few points of uh, Trolls Layer Orange to push a little bit more highlights and after I will add just a few white into this Trolls Layer Orange for my last highlight on the red remember to reduce step by step more and more the surfaces you are going to reach to create your transition so i just had a few point of 
white into my orange and come back just to tap my last few points of highlight not everywhere once again just on some few surfaces to create my contrast So now with some dark angel green and very very diluted I'm going to apply some few layers on some different parts not necessary everywhere but just on some few parts of wood uh, to create um, some uh, asymmetrical effect and to have something with more life inside remember I'm not going to apply everywhere and I'm going to make very some few layers of color and after when it will be totally dry I can come back and make it again on some of them of some of the surfaces just to uh, be sure the color will be more strong and that will be the last step uh, for, for this scenery um, the next one will be about probably the scenery but this time in stone and uh, probably a last one will appear just with some the scenery who have some special effects like uh, some other source lightning or something like that So here is the result for this first batch of scenery. I really hope you enjoy. The next one will be about the scenery with more stone. And I really hope you are going to enjoy this one too. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, like, uh, subscribe to the channel and post a comment if you have any kind of question or recommendation. And uh, you can always support me on Patreon if you like uh, the kind of content I propose to you. Thanks again for watching and see you very soon for the next tutorial. Bye bye.